What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to share how you can create a procedural moving cloud system. This technique is super simple and is very useful in adding that extra layer of volumetric detail to your various 3D environment shots. So recently I've been working on this volcanic eruption shot here and this right here is just a work in progress so far but one of the recent additions to this shot that I want to talk about and show you guys how to do was the addition of these volumetric clouds that are sort of flowing over the mountains here in the foreground. So you can see that in our compositing node tree here I've just added this cloud system with this alpha over node and I've just overlaid the system to add a little bit of volumetric clouds in a very subtle way over our mountains just to give a little bit of volumetrics in the scene and obviously we can increase the amount of clouds here this is a little bit too much and we can also adjust the density of the volumetrics themselves but I just wanted to share how I actually created these very simple volumes to add a little bit of that extra detail and if we go into layout mode really quick and just play through our scene very briefly you'll notice that the actual volumetrics are animated from left to right which is going to provide a lot of extra realism for your render so this is the effect I'm going to show you guys today I'm going to to go ahead and open up a new project and we're going to start from scratch. And the first thing we're going to do is just create a very basic primitive as the base of our cloud system. So I'll go ahead and press shift A and you can use any primitive of your choice. I prefer to use icospheres because they're not high in detail but you can adjust their general shape fairly easily. And I'll just uh, kind of scale it out here on the Y axis so we have sort of a cloud shape to begin with. And one thing we might do first is just deform the shape a little bit so it's a little bit more cloud-like. Uh, this isn't really that necessary because we're going to use some modifiers, but um, let's just go ahead and do it for the sake of this tutorial. So I'll just go into edit mode here and I will select our proportional editing option. And then I'll just kind of deform our cloud a little bit to create a little bit more of a unique shape. And I can scroll up or down depending on how much I want the vertices to be affected. So now we have something like this, a little bit more cloud-like to start out with. Again, not a necessary step because we're going to use a displacement modifier, but just in case you want to have a little bit more control over the general shape of your cloud at first, you can do this. We'll go back into object mode. And now what we're going to do is we're going to displace this with a displacement modifier. So I'll go to our modifier properties tab here and add a displacement modifier. And now we want to add a new texture for our displacement. So I'll click on new. And if we go into our texture properties, we can then switch the type to clouds. And now we can adjust some of the noise settings of our cloud system to kind of vary the shape depending on what you're going for. So I'm just gonna leave it like this for now, but we may come back to it later. And now one more thing I want to do to our base primitive here is just go back to our modifiers tab. And then I want to add a subdivision surface to smooth it out a little bit like so. And we can also experiment with which modifier goes first so if we want a little bit more of a jagged result we can bring our subdivision up one or we can bring it down and have a much smoother cloud I'm gonna actually leave it above just so we can get a little bit more random variation in our shape and now what I want to do is press shift a and we're going to add a volume empty so go ahead and select this and we're going to apply some modifiers to this empty in order to create our volumetrics based on our initial primitive that we've added to our scene here. So I'll select our volume empty. Then again, we'll go to our modifiers tab and I'll add a mesh to volume modifier here. And then we'll select for the object, our icosphere. And now, as you can see here, already we have a basic cloud that's based on the shape of our icosphere that we have created. And I'll go ahead and in our render properties tab, I'll switch to cycles and under light paths I'll give it some volume bounces maybe at least two for the sake of this example so we get some light bouncing around the volumetrics and I'll go to our environment tab add a environment texture just import a basic HDRI to our scene here so we can view our cloud in rendered mode here all right, now we'll go to rendered view and see what we get so far. I'll also turn our film to transparent really quick. So right off the bat, this is what we get as a basic cloud shape for our volume empty. And now we can select our volume empty and go back to our modifiers tab. And now what we can do is we can actually adjust the density of our cloud system. And then we can also adjust the voxel amount to increase the detail of our cloud. So I might just make this, uh, we could try maybe 64. You can see we're getting a little bit more detail here with 64 or we might just go ahead and double this to 128 
and now we're getting a lot more detail. Now, depending on how close your cloud system is to the camera, you may need to adjust this, but essentially the higher this number is, the more detail you're going to get. So we could even increase this to 256, and now it's going to give us a little bit more detail. Now, obviously the detail that we're getting also depends on the other variables we have included in this cloud system. So uh, let's go ahead and adjust a few of those. So I'll go ahead and bring the voxel amount down to 128, just so we have a little bit faster speed here. And one thing I want to do is add a volume displace modifier to give a little bit more random shape to our cloud system here. So while our volume empty is selected, it, I'll add a modifier and make it a volume displace modifier. And now what I want to do is add a new texture and then we can go under our texture tab here. Again, we'll add a cloud texture and we can adjust our settings based on what we want for our cloud system. So already you can see that we're getting a much fluffier looking cloud, which is going to be, in my opinion, a much better look. So we can play around with the size of our noise to get a little bit different result. I think the smaller noise was probably better it was giving us a nice fluffy cloud look, maybe 0 0.12, 0 0.25 maybe. So this is something you just wanna play around with depending on the look you're going for. And already we're getting a pretty nice looking cloud system. We'll go back into our modifiers tab and we can adjust the strength of our volume displace as well. So we can increase this maybe to two and really increase the effect that that cloud texture is having upon our volume. I'm gonna bring it down back to 0.6 maybe. And we can also go back to our Icosphere base here and adjust its displacement modifier as well. So for example, bring this up to four, all of a sudden we're getting a even more organic looking cloud shape. So a nice way to think about this is the Icosphere and the modifiers you have on it are creating the general shape for your cloud system. And then once you add your volume empty, any adjustment you make here with the volume displaced modifier or the texture being applied to your volume displaced modifier is going to add that refining detail. Finally, one more thing I want to do is add a material to our cloud here. So I'll go to our material properties, add a new material, and it's going to automatically create this principled volume shader for us. But now we can adjust our color and density from here as well. I'm going to go back to our modifiers tab here and just bring back down our density here to one. So now we can just control our density with the uh, material settings here. So we can maybe make this 10 or maybe that's a little much, maybe four. Something like this is okay. Maybe a little bit less, maybe two. And at this point, you can play around with your various settings here. I might increase the voxel amount again to 256. And one really cool thing about creating clouds in this way is you can actually animate your cloud system simply by keyframing the movement of your volume empty here. So if I just select our volume empty, and move it from right to left or left to right, or depending on which direction you'd like your cloud system to move in, you can actually animate your volumetrics and create a much more organic looking system. And one more thing I'm gonna show you guys is just by selecting your Icosphere here, I'll go ahead and turn it back on here, select it, and then I'll go into edit mode, and we can actually you know, select our Icosphere here in edit mode, select all of our vertices, and then press Shift D, and we can create more volumes with the same setup. So if I just duplicate this Icosphere a few times, I can sort of sketch out where I want the clouds in my scene, maybe have some bigger ones. You know, we could even, you know, combine some here and just create a whole, you know, weather system like so. I'm still in proportional editing mode here, so that's why some of the vertices are moving around a bit more. Um, but you can see that if I just duplicate our original Icosphere, once I go back into object mode, and now when we go into render view, you can see we built a bigger cloud system just by editing the base Icosphere shape here. So this is a really nice way you can have a little bit of fun with your volumetrics in your scene. And now you can see when we go out of rendered view, we can get a nice preview of our volumetrics here as well. So anyways, guys, that is a simple way you can add some organic looking moving volumetric clouds into your scene. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to see next on the channel and I'll see you next time.